Don't have any. Proverbs 29:18. Proverbs 29:18. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Boy, didn't we have a little windstorm this week? It peeled up one of our buildings, knocked down some trees. About picked me up. I felt like Dorothy there for a little bit. I'm serious. I was walking back over in the office, and my, my feet come up off the ground. I thought, what is it? And it can't help but be out in it. I really enjoy it. I'm sorry, Cheryl. I don't see any guests here today. Amen. That's up to y'all to bring guests here. I can't. Hallelujah. Keep that. But, but let me just say this to you. I, I'm not the best preacher in America. I'm as good a pastor as I can be. But what we preach from this house is truth. Right out of the word. And if you want to be a good witness, learn how to share it. You have social media. Almost every one of you now have social media. And you can share these sermons. You can tell people to get. And you can start sharing the word. And I, I thought about this this morning. That we got so much opportunity to share the gospel with people. And it's sitting right here. And we'll listen to it. And we'll re I have people all the time say, I, I, I've been listening to you for years, Pastor. I don't go to church. I, I live here, there, or yonder. And, uh, and I say, oh, I appreciate that. But share that. Share that with somebody. Share this morning's message with people. Uh, if some of you are smart enough to pull little quips out of it and send it to people, do that. Amen. I, you have, there is, I have no license to what I preach. I stole it. Right out of the Word of God. Amen. Just like every one of you. There's nothing new under the sun. That's why I get tickled to people that like somehow they own something they preached out of the Bible. Come on. Amen. We all, all got it from the same way. We just believed God, prayed over it. Amen. And he just gave us the ability to put it together. So learn how to share the word. Amen. Are you comfortable? Charlie, if you say that one more time. I, I know, but she knows better than to say that. Amen. She, she's, I'm the only thing keeping her mo moving right now. Getting her up and down. Keeping her going. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no revelation, no vision, no purpose. People cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Read it again. Where there is no revelation, no vision, no purpose, people cast off restraint. I watch what's happening in the world today, not just America, but the world, and I see that people have no vision. They have no understanding. That ignorance is the... Ignorance is probably the worst sin that I can think of, to want to stay ignorant. I, I had an opportunity this week to spend a little time with Neil, one of the guys that works out at the ranch. He helped show me how to work on the carburetor in my old car. And uh, got it going, get, went down the road. It was funny. I went around the curve to, down the road, and a man yelled at me and waved. And he, he knew the former owner of the car, and they were best friends. Amen. It was one of them. And I said, yeah, he's in the back seat. That's the true story. He's been cremated, and he's in the back seat of my old 71 Challenger. And we, we got to share and talk with one another. But I wanted to learn from him about how to set the bowls and the stuff on that old double pumper Holly, you know, just make it run a little bit better. And uh, did the same on the Harley, got the clutch fixed. So ignorance is a terrible thing to stay ignorant. Amen. Boudreaux and Thibodeau went out hunting. They were up in Alaska, and they got they, every year they'd go up there and they, they'd hunt. Well, this year they, they went back because they, they had a, an opportunity to kill six moose. They killed six moose, and the plane landed, and, and Boudreaux told the pilot, he said, load the moose up in the plane. And he said, man, he said, that's too much weight. He said, that's so much weight, I don't know if we can get off the ground. He said, the plane last year got off the ground. It's the same size plane, so can put it on there. So they loaded it all up, and they flew off, and they crashed. He got out of the plane. The pilot looked at Boudreaux, and he said, I, t I told you, man, we couldn't do it. And he said, where do you think we at? And he said, probably about the same place we were last year when we crashed. I mean, no, ignorance is going to keep you doing the same dumb stuff over and over again. Amen. Father, thank you for the word of God. I ask your blessing and, and the opportunity to share a powerful word in Jesus' name. Everyone shout. Amen. God bless you guys. You may be seated. Without purpose, life has no meaning. One of the things that I've really been passionate about over, not over the years, but particularly over the last month, is the issue of purpose. Amen. That's a scary looking picture of me right there. I look like a head on a, anyway, I, I'll take it. Hallelujah. 
You can't change the you know you can't change the way you what you're born with. Amen. Well, you can change it a little bit, but then it always pops back in as when you get older. Amen. But purpose is, 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 is so important. Purpose is the key to life. Without knowledge of your purpose or why you're here. And when, you know, I, and I go out by, guys, and I mean this with all my heart, when I, when I speak to the young people or, or, or folk in this house, for you to find a purpose, for you to understand that God meant for you to be here is so important. Amen. It will change your life. It will give you a reason to get up in the morning. Uh, again, I was talking with my pastor on the way here, and I said, I'm fascinated every time I see a man walking with a backpack and living under a bridge, and he moves from bridge to bridge from day to day. What motivates him? What keeps him going? Yeah, I know it's survival, but there has to be a purpose. There's got to be a reason to keep moving. There is a, a generation in every nation, not just America, that seems to have lost its sense of purpose. We saw last year during riots in Minnesota, Seattle, and Portland, they're out of touch with values, morals, and convictions that build strong families, secure communities, healthy societies, and prosperous nations. I saw stuff last year I thought I'd never see in this nation, but it was like a turmoil that took place. We preserve nature, yet we'll kill our unborn babies. We build houses, but not homes. Our, our colleges teach the youth to be smarter, but not wiser, bigger, not stronger. We live longer, but we enjoy life less. less. We conquer space, but not our addictions. Again, Proverbs tells us where there's no revelation, where there's no vision, where there's no understanding, where there's no purpose, people are going to cast off restraints. I read that America has spent more money last year on drugs than we did on oil. We're a nation adrift. We're a nation that has pushed into, and I'm not just talking about illegal drugs. I'm talking about pharmaceutical all the way around. You have to discover our fulfillment in life is dependent on becoming and doing what you were born to be and do. My life has always been about trying to find out what is it I like doing? What is it I was born to do? What is it, God, you wanted me to do? 1 Corinthians 9, 26, Paul said, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. There has to be a reason why I get up, a reason why I preach, a reason why, why I get to do what I do. When my phone rings, it's almost always connected to my purpose. My phone rang this week. Uh, a lady that I love in the North Campus, 42-year-old daughter, passed away in her sleep. Amen. My phone went off again last night. A young man who was in my youth group years ago passed away at 48 years of age. Every one of them, you know why they call me? Because it's connected to my purpose. Amen. They understand I've loved these people. I've cared about these people. Amen. And there's something about a connection to eternity. Without purpose, life is an experiment or a haphazard journey that results in frustration, disappointment, and failure. The absence of purpose, time has no meaning, and energy has no reason. When I think about how people have walked through life, and it's just like they're experimenting. They're trying to figure things out. It's haphazard. They, they don't understand that why they're here. Purpose is uh, uh, the original reason for the existence of a thing. When God created you, he created all of us with a purpose. It's the cause for the creation, the need that makes a manufacturer produce a specific product. Have you ever looked at something and thought to yourself, I wonder why they created that? Well, I, I, I get, my mind just, just runs amok. I see a, a leaf blower, and I think, great invention. Amen. Sure beats raking them. Right? Somebody come up with a way to blow them leaves out. A lawnmower, same thing. Somebody put a string on the end of a, 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 a made a weed eater. I, mean, I just get, my mind just runs through. Everything that's been produced has to have a purpose to it. So the manufacturer thinks about it, then he produces it. Uh, even, if it's, even if it's a soda, amen, a chainsaw. This week we had trees go down. Thank God for chainsaws. Thank God. Amen. Somebody got out there one day, and they were doing this right here. Amen. And saw something. They said, there got to be a better way. Hallelujah. There got to be a better way. And somebody come up with a motor and made a chain run on that thing. And next thing, wing, 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 wing. I've often said, if you want to make a million bucks, make life easier on somebody. Somebody said that windshield right there. You know that windshield? That windshield stays dirty. The windshield wiper do this right here, but it stayed dirty. And another guy said, you know what? Let's put some water on it. And they just put a squirter on that thing. Next thing you know, you got a windshield wipers with squirters, amen, and it cleans your windshield. And then one guy said, you know what? I don't like this right here going real fast. Let's put a little motor on it so it does it every now and then. Hear what I'm saying? Are you going through life and people have produced things and made things for purpose, hallelujah, to make life easier on you, and you didn't realize it came from the manufacturer, and you did too. 
God manufactured you, made you with a purpose. Everything about you has a purpose to you. Therefore, purpose precedes production. I got to think about it, then produce it. God thought you before he created you. You were in the mind of God before he put you in the womb of a mother. You are no mistake. He thought you for a reason. So your existence is evident that this generation needs something your life contained. Again, I am a cemetery dweller. I go to cemeteries all the time, preach funerals all the time, and I'll walk through cemeteries, and I think to myself, I wonder what this person created. I wonder what this person's purpose was. I wonder why they were here. And I think also how many people died with songs that they never didn't write, poems they didn't write, things they didn't produce, amen, all the things that God could have blessed them with had they just done it. Purpose, let me write these down. You need to write them down. First, purpose is inherent. In other words, you were born with it. You were born with purpose. Everybody here. Uh, birds fly, born with the ability to fly. You don't have to teach a bird to fly. It's inherent in them. Fish swim, it's inherent inside of them. Amen. He created men and women with qualities and functions to fulfill their God-given purpose. Your height, your race, your skin color, your language, your physical features, your intellectual capacity. How many know not everybody got the same intellectual capacity? Hallelujah, that's known as IQ. We don't all have the same, amen. But listen, I am made with just enough that God made me. He made me tall enough. He made me heavy enough. He, he made me wide enough. I didn't do this. Ain't my fault, amen. This is who I am. Come on, can I get an amen? Amen. And it's all designed with a purpose. Moses was born with an inherent nature of purpose. God made Moses into a deliverer. It was put inside of him. First off, his mother put him in a basket in an ark, amen, so she delivered him. It was a part of his, who he was. It was inherent. One day, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew during the time of slavery. When he thought no one was looking, he killed the Egyptian, and he buried him in the sand. He did that to deliver the Hebrew. During that time, he saw the next day, he went out and he saw two Hebrews fighting, each other, and he said, hey, guys, why? Well, this is wrong. Why are you hitting one another? And the man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. In other words, I didn't bury him deep enough. Uh -huh. Forty years later, while working for his father-in-law, God reclaimed the purpose of God inside of Moses. What was Moses' purpose on earth? Was to be a deliverer. He saw that, and even though it looked like it's over with, and I want to tell you this, sometimes in your life you said, well, I thought God was going to do this, this, and this. Well, you watch and see how God brings things back around. We'll get to that in just a minute, but I'm just going to tell you something. When he brought Moses back, he used Moses to, to uh, deliver the children of Israel. Amen. So he sent Moses to Pharaoh to free the Israelites. It was inherent. Exodus 3.10, so now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God didn't throw away the skills and the talents, amen, and the purpose that had been given to Moses at birth. He simply renewed them and redirected them to be intended to be used. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. When God calls you, when God purposes you, he didn't repent for that, amen. He put it inside of you. Remember this. Hallelujah, remember this, amen, as you're moving through life. Purpose is individual. It's individual. We are the way we are because of the why we are. I'll say it again. We are the way we are because of the why we are. There's something God sent you to earth to do that the world needs. Your birth is evident of that. Paul had a purpose. Peter had a purpose. You know, you think, well, they're, yeah, they're preachers. Yeah, but they were different. Paul, even though he was raised around um, traditional Jews, he was a Benjamite, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. God used him and called him to go to the Gentiles. That's us. But then he used Peter, who you'd think would be more like a Gentile, because he's an old fisherman. He sent him to the Jews. Amen. Paul declared it in Galatians 2 7. He said, It was soon evident that God had entrusted me with the same message to the non Jews as Peter had been preaching to the Jews. In other words, both were preachers, but they had individual things. Now, this hits me because I know churches that I think that other churches ought to be like every church. Amen. We are the little country church. We're different than other churches. Amen. God gave us an individual mandate to win the laws, to integrate the body, and to nurture people. That's what we do. You know why we do that? Because that's what we're good at. 
Amen. We want to win people to Jesus. My passion, man, is to win people to Jesus. I want to get to heaven knowing that when I got there, more people were there because I existed here. Amen. I want to see the body integrated. Whatever race, color, economic, I just want to see them get together. Integer, integrity, amen, to come together, to not be divided. You know, it's so important. We've been a blessed church, 18 years without schisms, without divisions, without, without a whole lot of yang-yang. You're going to have some yang-yang because you got people. Amen. They can't help themselves. Amen. So, but it's important to understand that we have vision here. Amen. An individual, uh, and, and to nurture people, to help people through life. Nobody can take your place. There's no substitute for you. Say it with me. There's no substitute for me. Say it again. There's no substitute for me. There's no sweet and low for you. Amen. Ain't no substitute for you, sugar. Amen. You, you just the way God put you. Hallelujah. You just the way God wanted you. Purpose is often multiple. Sometimes people say, well, Pastor, what's my purpose in life? Let me say it to you. It's multiple. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a friend. Amen. It's, it's multiple. We do a whole lot of things in life. Amen. We have a lot of things that we do. Some people try to define it as just one thing, but it's, most time it's very much multiple. Genesis tells us that God placed lights in the sky for a variety of reasons. God created all things. I've got to be careful not to get into stuff that I'm just now figuring out. But here I am, 60 years old, been preaching since I was 19. And I'll be honest, the first 10, 15 years of my life preaching, I was just trying to figure, I'm still trying to figure things out. But I realized something, that God created Satan for a purpose. His name was Lucifer. He was a worship leader. And he failed to complete his purpose. And when he did, he was ejected out of heaven. Jesus said he saw him fallen. Anytime you reject your purpose on earth, you become little devils. That's what happens in life. So be careful. Come back to that. Whoa. God created death for a purpose. Did you know God wanted you to live and then die? He wanted your faculties to, to swear. You, you're here for a purpose, and then we go on and get, it's, it's not termination, it's transition. Amen. Into another place. But what happened when sin entered the world, two other things entered the world. Killing and murder. And all of a sudden, now we didn't just die. We were killed and murdered before we completed our purpose. You follow the preacher? So I bring this thing back to purpose. I knew it was going to be a little heavy. It's going to be a little quiet in the house. You're going to be thinking about it. So I come back over here, and I've asked God, Lord, in my life, would, I just want you to do me a favor. Help, help me live till my purpose is done. And however I leave here, let everybody understand it was finished. Can you get an amen? When Jesus died on the cross, they didn't kill Jesus. He laid down his life. Amen. He, he died. He said, it is finished. Amen. I'm done now. Hallelujah. I'm going, I came to do what I, I, I needed to do. Genesis 1.14 says, God spoke. Mm. God speaks. Are you listening? God speaks. Are you listening? He said, lights, come out. You ever think about God having that clap on before we did? Amen. God spoke, said, lights, come out. Shine in heaven's sky. Separate day from night. Mark sees his days and years. Lights in heaven's, verse 15. Lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made. He made light with purpose. He made two big lights. The larger to take charge by the day, the smaller to be in charge at night. And he made the stars, and he placed them in the heavenly skies to light up earth. Watch that again. God made the stars. What was the purpose? What is the purpose of all of those millions and billions of stars? So we could see them from earth. You know, you don't really, here's the thing. We, we got this, uh, this idea that there's something out there. We need to go find it. Everything God did was with a purpose, amen, so that we could enjoy it. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So when God created the stars, he did it so I can sit back at night and look at him and say, he did that for me. Everybody say, he did that for me. Say it again. He did that for me. 
Amen. It's not about evolution. Amen. It's about purpose. So God creates the stars. He creates the sun. He creates the earth. He has multiple reasons for purpose here. Amen. He placed him in the sky and, he, to, and oversee the day and night to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. The sun was created to separate day from night to mark the seasons. The sun's so important. Amen. It has a purpose to it. It marks when the cool weather hit yesterday. Oh, Jesus, we earned it. Amen. We knew it was coming to seasons. We're fixing to make this rotation to mark the seasons, the days and the years, to rule the night, separate light from darkness. Amen. To give light for growth to the earth. Multiple purposes are seen all throughout creation. Amen. God creates a tree. He throws a tree out there, and the tree gives oxygen. But not only does it give oxygen, it gives shade. Not only does it give shade, it gives fruit. Amen. All kind of good stuff comes from the tree. The tree has multiple purposes. You have multiple purposes in life. Amen. Quit just looking for one. Amen. Find out what it is that I can do and then do it well. Animals provide food and clothing. And by the way, some animals provide uh, friendship. Amen. Such as only dogs. Hallelujah. Flowers. Flowers are beautiful. They satisfy the bee's needs for nectar which supplies pollen for the production of fruit. Amen. Everything God creates has a, a multiple purpose to it. Amen. Men and women have multiple roles in life. A spouse, parent, family, member, worker, church believer, friend. Now, next, purpose is interdependent. In other words, we need each other. Nothing exists for itself. Everything is related to something else. When God created you, he created you with a need to need. Amen. We have a need to need. Amen. We need each other. When God created light, he created the greater light, the sun, and the lesser the moon. The sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night. Guess what? The moon cannot shine without the sun. He set it up that way. Amen. When I see the, the glowing of that moon, I'm thinking to myself, the only reason you got that shine is your reflection of the sun. Amen. Sometimes the only reason I got that shine is I'm the reflection of the people that I'm around. Amen. They've done something in my life that's given me purpose in life. They've helped. Amen. It's, it's interdependent. Amen. We To reflect light, hallelujah, is so important. Purpose cannot be fulfilled in isolation. I mean, people all the time, well, I'm just, I just want to work, retire, and get away from everybody. Well, go ahead. What you've just done is you shortcutted your purpose in life. That God put you. Do you realize how long we're going to get to live after we leave here? By the way, God purpose, he created time. He gave it a Genesis and an exit, a, a, a revelation. He gave it an alpha and an omega. God sets outside of time. God sets up here in a place that said that a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, which means that whenever you get to heaven and you lost a spouse or, or, or a son or a daughter or a friend that's been dead for 30 years, amen, by the time you get to heaven, amen, it's going to be like you, uh, to them, you were gone 15 minutes. What you say, preacher? I'm telling you, heaven doesn't have the time you do. Heaven don't work out of time. God created time for us. Amen. And the days go by. That, that, that to me gives me tremendous comfort. Amen. That means when I get to heaven, my dad's going to say, boy, that took you four minutes. <laughs> Amen. It's just an amazing thought how God's got things planned out for us. Now, listen, purpose cannot be fulfilled by yourself. Romans 12, 4, for just as, come on up here, Joseph, if you would, but just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we through many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. I've said for years, when you know your place, it eliminates competition. I know who I am in the body of Christ. You know who you are. Amen. And when you fulfill, just like this morning we did communion, I, Miss Linda, you know I didn't call over here to ask who's doing communion because I knew you guys had it taken care of. It's a part of your function in life, part of purpose in life, amen, that you take care of. On Tuesday night, I don't call to make sure H is over here to get, getting the church going or somebody's got it open. I, I know it's a part of their function, amen. It's a part of purpose in life. One of the great things about learning how to delegate is learning how to let go. Amen. Release it. Say, Lord Jesus. Yeah. I walk in. I see the booth has got, got three wonderful men back there taking care of stuff. I, I appreciate that. I didn't call any of them and ask where well, they're going to be here today. They had purpose. Amen. And their purpose works off my purpose. My purpose works off their purpose. Amen. God created us with purpose. Every, every member of the body. 
Amen. Corinthians 12, 25. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Do you know when I'm around people that I love and they start to cry, I start to cry? When I'm around people I love and they start to laugh, I start to laugh. Did you know I talked with Bishop Gary McIntosh yesterday? Because I said, Bishop, I want to remind you in 2017, you were here with David Huff and we had a conference and the Astros were down. And before I could get off Baptist Encampment Road, they done hit two home runs and come back and won the game. I just wanted to call somebody and remind myself we could do it again. Amen. I just, I just have some hope inside of me. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, the body's connected that way. We rejoice together. We remember that. So it just goes on. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Again, Paul speaking to a segregated body. When, when Joseph's blessed, I'm blessed. When David and Tony are blessed, I'm blessed. When Josiah Ramirez appears blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. I've learned to be blessed with those that I'm, I'm blessed around. Amen. We bless one another. Can I get an amen? That's what it's saying here. Quit being upset when other people get blessed and you're not. You celebrate people's victory till your victory gets here. Amen. You keep believing because God created you with a purpose. Now watch this. Pastor, I have misstepped. I've been, I got into drugs. Alcohol ruled me. I had terrible relationships with people. Anger ruled my life. I know I was on a path that God called me out a purpose to do this. And all of a sudden, I took a misstep, like Moses killing an Egyptian and burying him. I took a miss. I, I messed up somewhere down the road, like, like David did. I, what, what am I going to do? Let me tell you about it. Purpose is resilient. Last week, I talked to you about resiliency. If you have made decisions that have interfered with God's plan and purpose for your life, He will arrange a reformation program for your purpose. I'm going to hold that right there for you just for a moment. Snap a picture, whatever you got to do. But if you made decisions that have interfered with the purpose of God, I know God. I know God too much, too well to let you know that he just backed off and said, well, go ahead. Go on to hell with you. Amen. He's not going to do it. He loves you too much. As a daddy, I'm the same way with my kids. Amen. I'll do everything I can to help reform and get them back on the right track so they can accomplish the purpose of God in their life. This week, out at the ranch, an old man showed up. 80, I think he was 86, named Harry DeVries. Showed up, walked up in there. In a, and I ain't making fun of him. I'm just showing you what I'll look like in a few years. But he, he walked up in there and he said, uh, hey, my name's Harry DeVries. When he said that last name, I know that last name. Marie DeVries, Martin DeVries loaned us the money to buy this building. Martin DeVries loaned us the money to buy Camp Holy Wild and the little country church in New Canaan. His niece was Priscilla. He said, my brother loaned y'all the money to buy this place, didn't he? And I said, yes, sir. So I'm standing, he don't know who I am. And he says to me, I believe it was back in the late 90s that a church over in Crosby was going to buy this place. And I guess they bought it. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, Kenny, I said, uh, it didn't happen exactly that way. Amen. As a matter of fact, there was a church in Crosby that wanted to buy this place. But the pastor ended up leaving, and they were unable to buy it. But then he ended up coming back. Its purpose is resilient. God will put you back into a reformation to get you back to where you belong, Travis. He just has the ability. To do. That's what purpose do in your life. That's why you got to keep it alive. This resiliency of purpose is evident in the lives of many people who've messed up their purpose. Abraham, Abe is what he was known as. When he got his purpose right, he became Abraham. Abe means daddy. Abraham means big daddy. Amen. He was the father of nations. Saul, 
Saul went around persecuting believers. Amen. Was there when, when Stephen was killed. What we see in his life, hallelujah, he became Paul the Apostle. Cephas was his name. Amen. Foot always in his mouth. Always messing up. Smart aleck. Amen. And Jesus named him Peter. Rock. Amen. I want to give you some resiliency, son. God changed their names, not their purpose. God changed their names, but not their purpose. Amen. Your purpose is not hindered by your past. Amen. He turned the coward Gideon into a mighty leader, a murderer Moses into a deliverer. He turned a five-time divorcee at a well in Samaria into a preacher running back into the city. He had to come see a man that told me everything about myself. Imagine. Imagine if this morning we just said, Lord, now I understand. You made me for a purpose. You created my innermost beings. You knew me before I ever got. As a matter of fact, did you know the scripture says before he created the earth, he already thought about you, that you were his intention. And then he created the earth, and then he put the sun, and then he put the moon, and then he got it all spinning, and then he scattered the stars. And then he said, okay, now I'll send my son and my daughter into 2021 20, or into 1961 or whenever it was you were born. Amen. Your birthday, he put you here. It changes. It, see, that's why I can't buy evolution. I can't buy the nonsense that our kids are having to pay for in college. It made no sense. It made no sense. I like the fact that in the beginning, God spoke and there was light that there's a reason for me being here. Jeremiah 1 says, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. I knew what color hair you were going to have. I knew when it was going to fall out. I knew where it was going to be. I knew the color eyes you were going to have. Amen. I knew your height. I knew your weight. I knew everything about your intellect. Amen. I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. I got a plan. A prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. The reason for being is purpose. Purpose is inherent. You're born with it. Everybody got a reason for being purpose is individual. They, nobody can take your place. Nobody. Purpose is often multiple. you got a lot of things. As a matter of fact, the more you discover, the more you realize what kind of purpose you got. You know, and, and I don't mind bragging about David and Joseph, but when I hired them, I had no idea of anything that either one of them could do. I had no idea. I didn't know that both could do woodwork and could preach and I had no idea that David was really great at multiplying children. <laughs> Can I tell you a little bit about Tony? I didn't know Tony could sing. I had no idea. But purpose, what's happening in their lives is they're discovering purpose here. Josiah Ramirez came to us as a weed-eating Hispanic. At 15, 16 years of age, needing a place to work in the summer. So I gave him a weed eater. And he was faithful with that weed eater. He worked all summer with blisters on his hands. Came back again and again. His uncle was shot and killed by the cartel in Mexico. His dad sent him to San Antonio to live to get him away from that, the, 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 the pain and all the suffering going on there. Called me up and I said, I'll go get him. I went and met with him at a restaurant. So I, I had no idea the gifts and the callings and the purpose in his life. Amen. I just knew he was passionate about Christ. You see how this thing works? Amen. And as you work your purpose, you've got to keep and remind your children and your grandchildren. Oh, I pray in my own life I'm able to instill in the lives of my grandkids that you are here for a purpose. That God put you here for a purpose. 
Find out what that purpose is. Amen. It's multiple. It's inherent inside of you. Amen. It's individual. There's something that only you can do. It's interdependent. You can't do it without me. I need you, and you need me. Amen. And it's resilient. Oh, Pastor Day, they went down the wrong road. I'm believing it's resilient. Purpose going to get them back in Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. We've already had communion, which tells me your hearts are right with Jesus. But now i got to ask you this. Are you, are you willing to accept the purpose of God in your life? Are you running from it like Jonah? Will you, are you going to keep running and end up in a storm and <clears throat> risk other people's lives because you refuse to have purpose? It was God that sent the big fish and swallowed Jonah that sent him on over to Nineveh. Amen. God, I don't want to run. I want to accept the purpose. And by the way, once you do accept the purpose of God in your life, it's not a death sentence. It's life. It's excitement. Be honest with you, it's easy because you were made for it. It's not something you got to make happen. It's easy. It's easy to do because you were made for it. Oh, Pastor, I receive this word this morning. Lift your hand if you receive it right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I ask you to put an impartation of the purpose of God in the lives of every hand that's lifted. Remind us we're here for a reason on time. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Amen. I delivered my heart there. If I get our servant leaders to come up, I know I'm running behind. I had a flat this morning and had to swap vehicles and it was a wreck getting here and yada, yada, yada. Amen. But I had a purpose to get here. Amen. I had a reason to go. <clears throat> you need to tie the offering envelope. It should be on the back of your, your seat. Let's, uh, you know, the issue for me here is not for us to raise our giving. It's just for everybody to be a giver. If everybody be a giver, we'd raise our giving, amen, and be able to help people. I, I get calls, and I don't, talk, I don't tell you guys. I, I know maybe I should, but I don't tell you how much finances we, we bless other people with that have been struggling in life, and particularly during the holidays. But we're very benevolent, amen, toward our missionaries, toward home missions, and to reach and help other people. Not only that, to take care of our own pastors and the insurances and all the things that we got to do. So I thank you first for your faithfulness and giving. And by the way, you're not giving for any of that. You give to honor God. Amen. My giving has everything to do with the fact that I honor him. And in, in a day when things are going, when gasoline is climbing, food prices are climbing, you better establish yourself with a covenant to make sure that God's got your back. And the way you do that is with your tithe. Amen. Connect yourself through the hard times, and I promise you God will get you through it. He has every time. I'm going to walk all through Scripture and show you all through Scripture. It was during the hard times that people gave and gave properly that God kept blessing them. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns. Debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and success to the kingdom. Got it. Give it up for your pastor this morning. We do have some announcements this morning. Um, obviously, it's, it's Halloween. We got to make sure that we go out today, bring candy, um, help out those that, hey, maybe you don't want to decorate your trunk. Bring candy for those that did. That helps them, right? That's a, that's a blessing to them. I know I'll, I will definitely have some candy in tow because I will probably, everything I give to the church tonight, I will probably receive double portion. And so uh, feel free not to give my children tons of candy when they come to your car today. Uh, it, I know. Now, now they're like, oh, yeah.